big love. Do you believe in big love, Allison? What is big love? Big love is a lot of love, more than one person at a time. Oh, no. Never. No, not that type of love. <laughs> Ever. No. Do you believe, Tanya, in big love? No, I don't, but I am big love. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in big love? Do you believe in a lot? of love at one time. Yeah, I do. I do. I really do. Do you believe in swinging? No, no. No, I ain't uh, I'm not Because if I do something, I'm going to do it all out. And I don't want to be doing all out with everybody. You don't have to swing with everybody. You can uh, just swing with one couple. Nah, man, they have to be really fine. If I, if I, I don't care about fine. I don't care about fine. Nope. No swinging in my game. What if a guy want to, you know, share your one? Would you have a problem with that? Nah. I'm only 21. I gotta enjoy myself. So swinging would be totally out of question for you. <laughs> but that would be something that you could would consider. Yeah. What about you? I would. You would swing? I would swing. Do you think swinging is just, well, you know, you guys know each other? <laughs> Do I? Yeah. This has been George Bush. Live on the street, bathing at the dark. Amazing at the dark with today's mad issue is swinging in big love. Our first guest is the editor of Loving More magazine. Please welcome Robin Trash to the show, family. Right. Our next guest is known as the King of Swing. Please welcome Dr. Chris Otico. <laughs> King of Swing. I can't wait to talk to this guy. Our next guest is one of the funniest women in the business. My girl Kim Whitley's in the house. Yeah. yeah. And last but not least, my partner in crime, George Hot Pants Wilborn. <laughs> you know it's going to be controversial. I got to come to you first, Doctor, the King of Swing. How did you come up with that name? Well, Michael, um, about four years ago, I ended the uh, swinging lifestyle. And a year ago, um, I bought a huge mansion in Riverside. And I decided to turn it into my own um, swinging play palace, as you would say. Um, I, we have couples and single females, it's a very select group, it's not open to the public, mm -hmm. and they come and basically live out their fantasies. It's a place where they can dance on a strip pole. They live out their fantasies. Oh yeah, they live out their fantasies. It sounds like you live out your fantasies. <laughs> what can I say? Hey, somebody's got to do it, it might as well be me. Now you know Robin from Loving More Magazine, we always like to make a distinction between swinging and plural relationships. What, what is the difference? Well, polyamory basically is romantic relationships, loving relationships with more than one person. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about sex, it's about partnership. Yeah. Now, can I tell everybody what, what everybody knows who's listening to the show? Robin, ladies and gentlemen, has two men that she's living with. Hey! <laughs> hey, you remember when George asked the question, when you asked the guy whether or not he felt comfortable sharing his woman? Right. It's always a little different question when the man is being asked mm -hmm. about sharing his woman. Oh, right? man, we're not going to have it. You know what I'm saying? We're not trying to share nothing about our woman. We don't want you to share her shoes, nothing. How did you pull that off, Robin? How did you put men together? I understand it's difficult for women, too, but for two men... Well, That's actually, actually, I don't live with both of them. I, li mm. I have three partners. Look, Kim, <laughs> why, why did you say that, Kim? I mean, you had the fantasy. Oh, no, I was like, oh, she is bad. But how do you feel about it as a woman, though? I mean, you know, particularly, you got to say this. A lot of us as blacks, we're kind of stuck on things when it comes to these kind of relationships. Honestly, Kim. No, no, no. How do you now, feel about it? You know, Mike, you know how I really feel about it. When I was younger, when I was 20, you know, I was all about, oh, this is my man, my man. But when I got older, I realized, and I'm working, I actually wouldn't mind having about three, four of my girlfriends living in one house. We can all shop together. Yeah. One dude. Because you know? <laughs> we all, what we need y'all for. So what's happening with your wife? Is your wife involved in the lifestyle? He's no, married. No, no, I'm not married. I'm not You're married. not married? Dude, no. Oh, you got, you got a main squeeze of what? How you pulling oh, this no, off? No, no, no. I, I, I love women too much for having one. You just got a harem. Yes. That's You're just right. nasty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you probably got all kind of Windex and all kind of pine saw you need when people leave. But on the magazine, you said it's about loving relationships. Now, a lot of women, y'all wrong for that. A lot of women will say that you can't love more than one person. I've had this argument, George, you know, right. a thousand times on yeah. the show. Yeah. Can you love more than one person? You can love a lot of people. Most of us do love more than one person. And you can romantically, sexually love more than one person. The better, look at these women in the back. Woo! The analogy that you use on the show is you can love more than one child, 
You can love more than one friend, so why can't you love more than one person? I think more it's the sexual love. aspect of it that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. When you say, Kim? There's a difference between being in love and loving someone. So, you know, you can be with someone for 10 years. So are you saying, you can't, are you saying you can't be in love with two people? No, I don't think oh, so. Oh, come think, on. Oh, I don't, no, 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 yeah, because yeah, when you I'm like lusting and in love, all your focus is on that person. You, it's not that many hours in the day. <laughs> really? Right, it's it's three 20, love. It's 24. Right, but I can love you at like 5.7, and I love Mike at like 9.3. But isn't all love different anyway, so it doesn't have to be the same anyway, right? Absolutely. Right, Doctor, what do you say? Absolutely. You know, it, it's not for everybody, but the people who are in it, their relationships actually have to be all. What is, there were some stats on that. A young woman, in fact, the way I got involved in the whole swinging thing was a young lady did a dissertation on swinging. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Robert. I don't know if you all have any, like, studies on this, but it said that people who swung, swinging, yes. had marriages that lasted an average of seven to ten years longer. Are you familiar with that information? I am familiar with it. Doctor? That. Absolutely. And some more health benefits, people who have sex more than uh, three to four times a week, actually you know, ten years younger. Really? So, oh, yeah. Can okay. you say that again? <laughs> so, like, people that do what? People that have sex three to four times a week look ten years younger. Yeah, but they died ten years okay. early. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that's not true, too. That's not true. swinging in the most simplest terms, how would you describe it? I would define swinging as um, a couple or people who are involved in a serious relationship, a loving relationship, and they allow each other to have sex with other people. So this is happening at the mansion? Absolutely. So can anybody just, can me and George just come uh, up the mansion? Now, wait a minute. Oh, well, well, I'm sorry. Can me, George, and Kim, and Robin just come through, or is there some kind of invitation process? Yes, there is. It's a private membership party. You go to call the number. Call me. Um, I interview both uh, the female and the male. Do you want to be honest with me, Doc? Do you want to see pictures of these people first? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Well, I don't want to come to your match. I don't want to come to your party. I'm surprised. The people that come here are absolutely gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? When people get into the lifestyle, especially women, mm -hmm. some of them come in a little bit overweight. All of a sudden, they're into the both in this. What do you think that is? You know, I, I have to say that you know I went to a swingers club. Yes. For research only, of course. Right. Just research, right. Right. And uh, it did seem to me that these people were, you know, more self-conscious about conscious rather about their bodies, because obviously more people are seeing it. They're more secure about it. And, yeah, and absolutely, absolutely more secure. More secure about absolutely. About it. And a lot of the women they lose weight and start looking really, really good. Can you wear a girdle during the act? Whatever you want. Not if you want. Two or more guys to do it with you. <laughs> That's it. Two or more. Now wait a minute, you can wear a corset. You can? I'm, okay, you can wear a corset. Oh, what's what going if, on? I'm just, what, what, oh, yeah, what, I'm right in between. Another person. Like, what if we're there and you got the couple and. I'm, That's when you tag. You're like, you tag. Right. You tag out. Nah, you tag out. <laughs> Some couples are on a certain level where they everybody has to agree, and then there's sometimes when people take one for the team. But, but no, you did not say one for the. No, you did not say one for the team. And even in a, even in a situation that's more that's supposedly more loving, how do you, who gets to choose? For example, with you and these two men who we already uh, have explained don't live with you now, but who decides who can come in and who can't? If you love the guy and the other guy doesn't like the other gentleman. Then what happens? Well, it depends on the partnership. Like my primary partner probably will have precedence over somebody, somebody new coming. So in. he can eliminate the other person by saying, "No, I don't like this." Guy. Well, he can, but he usually doesn't. I mean, usually there's a trust that goes on and built up in these relationships. There's a lot of good communication. So when you trust somebody, I trust my partner that he's going to pick partners that are going to going to talk to me and communicate, sure. and and that even if I don't like them, he sees something in them. I got to trust him so, on that. So yeah. I want to know. All right, what about the, you and your partner throwing down? Y'all just swapped up, right? And we don't swap. I'm a I'm polyamorous. Talk to him. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to talk to him. You just swapped up with your girl, oh, yeah. and you look over there, mm -hmm. and she is throwing down, having the time of her life, having the time of her life. And you look down at yourself and notice that you not having quite as much fun as her. Right. What does that do to it? She's making sounds with uh, someone else who's never made with you. Well, first of all, that's never happened. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, you okay. ain't had the right guys over to the mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, big daddy. 
don't even get to the mansion. But baby, you better not invite me and Mike. Oh, my God. Go ahead, doctor. Go ahead. What's oh, yeah. up? Okay. The thing is, it's all about pleasure in the moment, okay? There may be somebody that's a little bit different than you, you know? You just got to let them have fun. The thing is, I take that person home. Does that make sense? Uh, a lot of the couples that come, the woman may have more fun for that moment with another guy. But her husband is the one that takes her But home. see, doctor, you got to admit this, and I got to run this by you. Okay. You're not married. Absolutely. So there's not a connection with you with this other woman. You're not loving the other woman that you're sharing. Correct. If you're sharing a girlfriend or whatever. Absolutely. Now, Kim... If you were involved in a relationship and you loved your man, loved him, could you imagine sharing him with another woman who you knew he loved and she loved him? I mean, he put in the tracks out of her head. And, and I know you can relate to that. <laughs> Don't stop with me. Could you, as, as a woman being secure, no matter how secure you are, could you deal with See, I'm that? Into the, I'm into this question right now. Come on, this is an interesting go ahead, go ahead. situation. Could I deal with that? Yes, I could deal with that. Now really? I might have to put a low jack on his foot or something after that because I don't want him to revisit her. You know what? That's a good point. Cheating, cheating swingers. Oh. Cheating swingers. Because oh. I just wanted, I mean, I, I loved him and it was that kind of thing. Could I really let him? She's having a good time. If if she was like baboonish looking, I can deal with it. <laughs> a small dog in the face, maybe bark. You being honest. I'm being honest. Well, why do you say that? Why does she have to be that? Because then I can, if she had hair on her back, it's all good. <laughs> Because then I know the competition is not as, it's not not as hard. He's not going to go see her later. But I'm wondering, have you ever been in love? Or Absolutely. In love. So you've been in a relationship before yes, and in love. And you were also mm -hmm. swinging Absolutely. with the in love thing. That's correct. You have children, doctor? No, no kids. What about you, Robin? I have three. How do the children, do they know about the lifestyle, uh, first of all? Yes, my kids do. Let's talk about that. Uh, my kids have been raised in a polyamorous family. And most of the friends that I have are polyamorous. So they've been raised with just, this is kind of, Normal for them? It's kind of normal for them. Right. So they don't think a lot of it. My 20-year-old considers himself poly now. Yeah. Don't you think you're 20-year-old a boy or a girl? Uh, he's a boy. So he's poly now. Yeah. Of course, he's, of course yeah. he's poly. I don't know. I'm probably my 11-year-old daughter probably is. Don't go there because that was my next question. Uh, yes, now, now being a Caucasian woman, do you know of any blacks who are in this lifestyle? And, doctor, I have to ask you the same question yes. when it comes to swinging. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, yeah. But you would have to admit there's obviously more... Caucasians involved in lifestyle. No, we really don't in play the, that. The we really, that is you know, true. black people, we really got a big problem with that, to be honest with you. We don't like to share cereal. Let's well, it's not that. <laughs> Actually, the truth is, is that I see most of it in the black community as people not being honest. Exactly. That was going to be my next point. You got to admit that. black people liars, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, black, men, like the black men, when it comes to sex and relationships, absolutely. Woo! Say it, girl. Say it. And, and George, you got to admit that we, in, in fact, you got to admit this yesterday, I don't know if you were here, when we were just having this little uh, conversation with some of the producers, a young lady sat right here at this table and said the exact same thing. She said, you know what? Lie to me. So a lot of people prefer to, yes, doctor, really? but I mean, come on. How many people can really handle the truth of sharing their partner with somebody else? You know what? I'd yeah. rather be a swinger than a cheater. Yeah, no. I'd rather be a swinger too. Thank you. Yeah. Right, we're going to talk about it when we come back. When we return, we're going to see what our late night family feels about swinging. And big love. You're watching Bays and After Dark. Shut it down for more things.